This is the course Mechanical Vibration, and in this presentation we will talk about Coulomb and his theoretic damping. My name is Carmen Miller Carger, and we will use figures and content adapted from the textbook RAW. This is part of chapter 2. Coulomb damping arises when bodies slide on dry surface. The force required to produce sliding is proportional to the normal force acting in the plane of contact. That is, F is equal to mu, which is the coefficient of friction times N, the normal force. Here in our free body diagram, we know that the normal force is equal to the weight. Therefore, we could also write mu times mg. The value of the coefficient of frictions depends on the material in contact and the conditions of the surface in contact. The equation of motion is a piecewise function. The friction force acts in the direction opposite of the velocity. So when we are going in this direction, the force goes in the opposite direction. When we go to this direction, the force acts in the direction opposite to the velocity. So here we have the two parts of our piecewise function and we can express it as a single equation using the sine function. As you see, here is the mass times acceleration, the force of the friction plus the force of the spring. So we have the equation is the of motion is this equation right here and the sine function will determine the sign of this term. For the solution, we can assume that the equation of motion is a piecewise function. So we have the solution will be, this is the part that we have already studied for the second order differential equation. We have a constant force which leads a constant solution. When you derive a constant give you zero, you plug in this constant over here, that's why the solution will be over k. When the velocity is negative, we can get the same solution with here a positive sign. Since it's a piecewise function, it behaves as a nonlinear differential equation for which simple analytical solution is difficult to find. For this type of equation, the best approach is to use numerical methods. However, let's solve it for specific initial conditions just to analyze the response. We will assume an initial condition in displacement equals to x0 and velocity equals to 0. Since the mass started with an initial displacement, it moved from right to left with a negative velocity. So let's start with case 2 and then we are able to find the constants a3 and a4, a3 being this over here and a4 being equals to 0. This solution is valid for half cycle only. When t is equals to pi omega n, which represents half cycle, the mass will be at extreme left position and the displacement from the equilibrium position can be found plugging in the number into the solution. Since the motion started with a displacement equals to x0, in half cycle, the displacement has become x0 minus 2 mu n over k. The reduction in magnitude of x in, it, in that time is 2 mu n over x. It can be demonstrated that for the other half of the cycle, the reduction is 4 mu n over k. This is the typical graph for a column damping. The amplitude reduces linearly in every cycle. Therefore, the magnitude of one cycle will be the magnitude of the previous cycle minus 4 mu n over k. You can see it here in the graph, right here. So this magnitude will be 4 mu n over k less than this. Frequency of motion will be omega n. The motion will stop at xn, which is less than mu n over k. The restoring force of the spring is less than the friction force mu n. Thus, the number of cycles that elapsed before the motion diseases is being given by this equation right here. And we can solve for n, and that will be the numbers of cycles to stop. The time to stop will be then be equals to n, the cycles to stop, 
times the period. And remember, the period is 2 pi over omega n. And we can read the period in the graph if we have an experimental curve. Finally, the slope of the involving straight lines, you can see that is the amplitude divided by the frequency, and that gives us this expression right here. Yes, some characteristics of the system with column damping. The equation of motion is nonlinear with column damp, whereas it's linear with viscous damp. Frequency of motion is the natural frequency instead of being the damped frequency. The motion is periodic with column damping. The system comes to a rest after some time with column damping. That does not happen when we have viscous damping or hysteretic damping. But in the case of column damping, the force of the spring is not able to restore the friction force. The amplitude reduces linear with column damping, whereas in viscous damping it reduces exponentially. Let's now study free vibration with hysteretic damping, also call it solid or structural damping. It's caused by the friction between the internal planes that slip or slide inside the material. This causes a hysteresis loop, which is seen in this figure right here, forming in the stress, train, or force displacement curve. The energy lost in one loading and unloading cycle is equal to the area, this area, enclosed in the hysteresis loop. It was found experimentally that the energy loss per cycle due to the internal frictions is independent of the frequency, but approximately proportion to the square of the amplitude. The mechanical model of a hysteretic damping is seen in this picture. As you see, the spring is also part of the structural damping model. The damping coefficient c is assumed to be inversely proportional to the frequency, whereas h is called the hysteresis damping constant. Therefore, if we substitute the damping coefficient into our typical equation of motion, we get this expression right here, where we have the constant of the damper and the constant of the spring. The energy loss that for a viscous damping, you recall that is this expression right here. If we substitute the value of C, we get pi h amplitude squared. As you recall, we said that the energy loss was not dependent on the frequency, but to the amplitude square. Another dimensionless constant used to describe the hysteretic damping is beta. Beta is equal to h over k. And then we can write the energy loss in terms of beta, which will be pi k beta amplitude square. The motion can be considered to be nearly harmonic, and the decrease in amplitude per cycle can be determined using energy balance. The vibrating frequency is the damping frequency. And the response of the system is very similar to the one used for viscous damping, which is this equation right here with initial condition x0 and velocity 0. The logarithm decrement, which is the logarithm of two consecutive amplitude, can be approximate equals to logarithm of 1 plus pi beta, which is approximated to pi beta, and this approximated to 2 pi zeta equivalent. That's equals to pi h over k. Here we have the equivalent viscous damping, which is zeta equivalent, will be beta half or h over 2k. The characteristics of the hysteretic loop are the following. The graph force deflection is usually obtained for experimental measurement of the structure. The energy dissipated in each cycle is the area enclosed of the hysteretic loop. You see here this area? You can calculate it, for example, in this graph as two triangles and a square. Sometimes you can also measure how many squares are inside the loop to get the area, and that area will be equal to the loss of energy. The constant of the spring is the slope of 
the deflection curve. So that slope will be calculated of the slope of the line from O to F. The graph gives also information about the maximum deflection of the response. And this will be here, the point F. You can calculate the maximum of deflection in this case will be, if this is given in millimeters, will be 8 millimeters. Using the equation of work, we can relate the energy loss with the damping constant and the logarithmic decrement. Under aesthetic damping, the system behaves as an undamped system and the response is similar to the viscous damping system. In this slide, I will give the most important equation to solve problems with hysteretic damping. The damping coefficient is defined as h over omega. The dimensionless damping coefficient beta is defined as h over k. The energy loss for hysteretic damping is defined as pi h amplitude square or pi k beta amplitude square. And that energy loss is the area in the hysteretic loop. We have the equivalent constant spring, k, which you use here too, right, is the slope of the hysteretic loop. Remember that the system behaves as an untampered system, and the answer is very similar to the one used in the viscous damping system, which is this one right here. The ratio between two consecutive amplitudes can be written in this form. The logarithm decrement now is the logarithm of this ratio and it can be approximated to the logarithm of 1 plus pi beta and that's approximated to pi beta which is pi h over k and if we take more than one cycle for example 0 to n we have to divide the this expression by n to get the decrement logarithm. To relate the logarithm decrement with the damping ratio, we have this expression right here. And the damping ratio relates to beta and h with these expressions right here. We can also calculate the equivalent constant of the damper, which is at the end the same we start with right here.